Jay Wallace again. Uh, in this video, we're going to do an installation on a 2000 watt true sign inverter. So we're going to start with our proper size positive cable, our proper size negative cable, a fuse block, a proper size fuse, along with the tools that are required to make our cables. What we want to be sure is that we start with a nice clean end as opposed to something very jagged and it's going to be very hard to work with. So we've gone ahead, we've made the nice cut on our cable, and what I like to do is to measure out where I remove my insulation. So I bring it flush to where the cable is going to stop on the lug and I make a mark. Once I have my mark, I just go completely around the cable, very lightly, so I don't cut any strands. And as you can see, it removes very easy. And then I can go ahead and just plug my lug on. And what you want to make sure is that once it's in place, that we get a good seal or buttered right up against the insulation. Now that we've got our insulation stripped in our cable and our lug in place, we're going to go into our crimper. So we're going to place the lug into the crimper. Make sure that the cable is butted in tight. We'll use our hammer and we're just going to give it one blow. And as you can see, we get a nice firm crimp. Now that we've got our, our lug crimped onto our cable, we're going to go ahead and shrink tube it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to measure where we want our shrink tube and we're going to cut it accordingly. Place it on. And we're going to go ahead and uh, shrink it up. We're going to go ahead and use our heat gun. Making sure that we get it uniformly all around. And one thing we want to make sure that we avoid here, and I'll show you just in a minute once I get this done. There's actually two things I'm going to show you. We want to make sure that we don't cover where our connection is going to be made with our inverter. What I mean is by bringing the shrink tube up into the flat surface so that we're not going to get a good connection on our inverter. Okay, for demonstration purposes, we're using a lighter cable than what should be used. Uh, for the positive and the negative, the fusing is the right size. We made sure that we're using a 200 amp fuse for a 2000 watt inverter. You want to make sure that you refer to the manual for the proper cable sizing and cable length. Okay, now that we've got our cable assemblies completed, we're going to go ahead and do the installation. So basically we've got our fuse block, which holds our fuse. We've got the appropriate size fuse for the size of the inverter. In this case, we're using a 200 amp fuse for a 2000 watt inverter. We're going to go ahead and uh, put our ground cable on. Snug it up. And what you want to make sure you're doing here is to make sure that you're not actually hooked up to your battery source, to your 12 volt source. Because if I was to move over here to do the positive, I came in contact with the chassis of the inverter, the inverter is done. You're going to have to replace it. So again, make sure that you're not connected to your 12 volt source. So once we get all that complete and they're tight, we want to make sure that we have our chassis ground. Now this is going from the inverter chassis ground to our vehicle chassis ground, whether it be a boat, an RV, or your motorhome. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring on our 12 volt battery source. Now that we've got our inverter connections made, we're going to go and hook up the 12 volt battery. So, what we want to do first is make sure we hook up our positive cable first. And I'll get to the reason why in just a minute. So, we're going to go ahead and put our positive cable on our positive terminal. One thing you want to make sure of, depending on what hardware you get with a battery, is that the lug goes on first and nothing goes in between the lug and the battery post. If in fact you were to put the washer down first and then the lug on top, what could happen is that the, the post will heat, the flat washer is going to set into the battery and you're going to end up with a loose connection and in turn you're going to end up burning the terminal on the battery. So. Lug down first, flat washer on top, lock washer. Go ahead and tighten down our terminal. And then we can move on to the negative. Again, making sure that nothing comes in between the battery terminal and the lug. The lug going down first, the flat washer, the lock washer, and then the wing nut. So the reason I say 
you want to put the positive cable on first. If I was doing this in a tight location and I was to go ahead and turn the positive wing nut and come in contact with the chassis, I would have a short. This way, if I'm over here doing the wing nut here, I come into contact with the chassis, nothing's going to happen. Just a little tip. Okay, so now that I've got my battery connections made, I'm going to go ahead and turn my inverter on. So all I'm going to do is hit the green button. You're going to get a beep. And what it's going to show right away is going to be my battery voltage, 12.6 volts. So I know I've got a fully charged battery. Okay, so now that our inverter is running, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in appliance. At this uh, point, we're going to plug in a light to make sure that our inverter is working. And look at that. Now, the inverter comes with a GFCI, and it's a ground fault interrupter. There's a test portion or a test button on it. You can go ahead and hit the test. You hear the click, and it shuts off. As you can see on our, our display screen here on the inverter, it's actually giving us voltage under load, which I'll wait till it clicks back here, 11.8 volts under load, and we're drawing 49 amps. And that's about right because we are operating a 500 watt halogen lamp. Okay, another feature on this inverter is it's got a USB charge port on it. We can take and plug in our USB charge, whether we're charging a iPhone, an iPad, whatever, as long as it uh, is able to charge off a USB. As you can see, we've run low on our camera here on our battery, so we've gone ahead and plugged in the camera. One thing you want to be very uh, cognizant of here is on warranty returns. People, you might get inverters back saying it doesn't work. The first thing you want to check is the GFCI make sure it's not tripped. In order to reset the GFCI, you have to be connected to a 12 volt source. The inverter has to be operational in order to reset the GFCI.